Sally, we had a few schools run their first cross-country meet this past weekend. Most athletic events will look a little different this year. How will cross-country meets look for athletes and coaches? And before I answer that question, JP, this weekend, what a great event just to see kids participating again. We had a few cross-country meets this weekend, and it's been 11 and a half months since kids have put on their school uniforms and competed um, and, and the smiles, you know, they had masks, everybody had masks, but you could see the smiles and excitements. And so what a, what a great Saturday to kick off um, all sports that we're going to play in the 2021 school year. Now, what's looking different? Well, first and foremost, I just said it's mask wearing throughout the whole event. Anybody around is mask wearing and you're going to see really smaller meets. Um, they're not going to be those massive meets where a lot of teams come and, and they're on the starting line. We're going to be social distance. We're going to run. But I would tell you, you know, at the meets that I saw, you know, four teams are there and what a great environment. So although it may look different this year, um, it's still exciting to get those kids on the cross country line, allow them to compete and to do it safely. Volleyball matches are about to start. How will they be different? You know, I think, again, mask wearing. That's different. Um, and for the person who's watching a volleyball match, what you're going to see different more than anything else is they're not going to be changing sides. They're going to stay on the same side of the court. And we will have benches that are six feet social distance, and we will follow all the guidelines. But once again, exciting to get in there and compete against each other. Warm-ups will be a little bit different and, and little tweaks here and there to make sure that we have safety guidelines in place. But once again, exciting for that to happen this week. The NMAA set the football schedule. Some people might want to know, how did you determine who would play each other and when? You know, JP, that was very tough. Everything is intertwined. And when you do an 11-man schedule from 2A to 6A, you know, we had different classifications playing each other because we need to just keep those uh, games regionally. And so we also had to look at officials in the regions. Do we have enough officials to cover Friday night games and Saturday night games? And so to find out how did it work, you know, we started kind of from 6A to 2A and we kind of came in the middle to make sure that we could see it happening. Um, but you're going to see games in the regional area. You're going to also see games that they may not be in the same classification. And if we had to find a game for somebody maybe in the southeast region with somebody in the central, you're going to see a neutral site because our teams cannot get on the bus and travel that long. So we will have a lot of neutral site games. But it's going to work. It's exciting. Um, we will start football games on Friday and Saturday. And once again, um, the thing that we need to make sure we let people know that it is mask wearing for everyone. And at this time of this recording, there are no spectators. However, we will continue to work at that and see if we can open up the spectators. I'll talk to the public education department and the governor's office to see if that can happen. But at right now, what we need to focus in on is our kids are gonna get to play. We have over 100 schools who will take part in fall sports. What if a school or a district doesn't go into hybrid learning until later? Can they still participate? You no, know, we have some schools that aren't going to get in until maybe next week or the week after. And then we have to remember they have that 14 day period where they needed to make sure that the schools are safely re-enter in, um, into the classroom and then we can look at sports. So even if they come in next week, there still is another two weeks that they are gonna to have to go through that process. I would say that at this point, if they're coming in this late, that they will be able to participate, but I do not believe in especially volleyball, cross country and football. And football, we may not have a culminating event, but in those other sports, they may not be eligible for quote unquote postseason. But a reminder, JP, is we still have not been approved for the postseason. So right now, we're just focusing in on the kids participating. Now that athletics are getting underway, what happens if a team has someone test positive for COVID? You know, we have told all our schools, the Department of Health, that is who you need to call. So it is not going to be on the coaches. It's not going to be on the athletic directors or the NMAA. We are going to follow all of the guidance by the Department of Health who are working every day with businesses, schools, 
you know, every single entity in New Mexico. So what's going to happen is though, if there is a positive test within a program, more than likely that program is going to shut down for 14 days. Um, I have heard 10 days from the CDC, 14 days is what our guidelines say, but ultimately, JP, it is going to be the Department of Health we're going to work closely with, and we're going to do everything that they ask us to do in order to keep kids safe. Lastly, we suffered a tragic loss with the sudden death of Dr. Karen Trujillo, an advocate of students. What was your reaction on the passing of this dedicated and caring individual? JP, I was just heartbroken and, and so sad. And, and every day in these videos and every week I always say, and you hear me all the time say, we're going to play sports again, New Mexico. Dr. Karen Trujillo, that was her mission. She was doing everything she could, not only to get the Las Cruces public school kids to participate, but everybody statewide. And that was her vision. Um, she was smiling Saturday when she saw those cross country meets from above. She's just knowing that we are participating and all of that work that she put in, um, like I said, not only for Las Cruces, but for the whole, whole state. You know, she was part of our board of directors and was very outspoken as to what activities and athletics do for kids. Um, a few years ago, she came to the NMAA in order for us to sa sanction Education Rising. And that activity has taken off dramatically where we are getting kids back into the education field in order to be trained to be teachers. Um, she had an impact and, and I could go on and on and on. Um, but one thing I like to say to all the communities is we are playing because there's a lot of people that have put in a lot of time and effort to get us to playing again. 11 and a half months, JP. And we are starting and we need to do this correctly. We need a mask wear, we need a social distance, we need to follow all of the guidelines. And we're gonna finish, we're gonna get to that finish line. And so as Dr. Trujillo, as she's up there and she wants us to finish, that should be our goal. We have a start. We started on Saturday, Although some parents may say it's not ideal because right now there's no spectators, but we're going to continue to work towards that. You know, that doesn't mean just because at this time that we're not going to be able to see our kids play. We're going to continue to work towards making sure all our sports are played this school year. And as Dr. Trujillo's legacy, we're playing sports again, JP, and now we've got to finish.